Hey guys, how's it going? We are outside Restwell Retirement Home where I'm gonna go inside and try a 70s diet and a workout that can be done with a walker and a hip replacement. So today's uh, gonna be- Well, it's not that kind of 70s video. Oh, it's a decades one? I mean, you can probably still go in for some community service. What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. A few decades were as magical as the 70s. Whether it was their choice of mushrooms or their tie-dye clothing, it was the height of the psychedelic era where music festivals were way more than just taking photos with your best friend Molly. So in today's video, we are gonna be exploring the 1970s and our first stop on this trip is just some classic festival fuel. We are at McDonald's right now, and I was just telling Kofi that whenever I get McDonald's, I just get shivers all over my body, except that time I had 100 nuggets. So in 1975, McDonald's released their first ever hot breakfast item, which was the Egg McMuffin. Saying that this is just a breakfast sandwich is like saying the Mona Lisa is just a painting. This thing is iconic. And then in 1977, they released the other parts of the breakfast menu that included hot cakes, hash brown, English muffin, eggs, sausage and a cheese danish so little did they know that they'd be breeding dad bods across the globe and you know as humans evolve our desire for fatty and greasy foods evolve with it so we can't get the danish anymore but you can now get buffalo chicken poutine to accompany your double big mac so that just shows you the way humanity is going so i am excited to get into this thing i have not had the hot cakes and i can't even remember just visually looking at it i'm having a little bit of buyer's remorse but luckily, they gave me double the syrup. But we gotta start off with the with the egg McMuffin, a staple. The cheese has been freed. That's a great day egg, y'all. I don't know how they do it. It's sorcery. They crack it on the spot in front of your eyes. If you go back there and watch them do it, I am longing for sausage. I like a firm sausage between my buns. Now let's dress these flat, flat hot cakes up. I usually associate pancakes with the weekend, I'm a weekend batter daddy. So that, you know, hopefully these are a treat. This is always the right move. Very soft, no crispy edge. That syrup taste was tapped from a factory. Reminds me of my first Craigslist meetup. Regrettable even when fully sauced. Wouldn't get these again. Now, probably the most favorite breakfast item at McDonald's is the good old hash brown. It reminds me a lot of myself, covered in oil. You can have it how you want it and it won't say a word. Just amazing. Pre-workout meal. Could be heading to the gym very shortly. And I'll see you guys when we get there. It is pre-workout time, everybody. We got some endo pump and some flight. VPN code 10 will save you 10%. Link is in the description. So today for the workout, we are following a bodybuilding legends workout, Frank Zane. So we won Mr. Olympia in 1977, 78 and 79 with the three-peat. Shout out C-Bum. So there's less than five bodybuilders in the world to ever beat Arnold in a bodybuilding competition, and Frank Zane was one of them. He has his nickname is The Chemist due to his bachelor degree in science, and his body literally looks like he was made in a lab. So he does a push-pull leg split. We are using his push date today. Very excited to try it because there's a lot of things in the workout that I've never done before. So let's go through it. Okay, so first up we have the bench press. You can't go wrong starting with the bench press. We got 12 reps, 10 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, 4 reps, and then 2 reps. So a lot of volume in this workout and a lot of heavy weights. I have not gone to a 2 rep kind of like set, especially on my 6th set in a workout ever. So this is a very interesting workout to me and uh, let's get into it. Safe today, so 275 for four. I'm gonna go 315 for two. I don't have fake waist today, so I can't, you know, it's realistic now. That's pretty easy. Remember the last time we did this? What, the real one or the fake one? 
All right, so exercise number two, we're doing the incline dumbbell press, but with a technique I've never done before in my life. It's called a mechanical drop set, so it's one extended set, and you're starting the bench at a 70 degree incline. I think that's 70 degrees. I didn't bring my, my protractor with me today, but I hope it is. So we're gonna do 10 reps, and then you're gonna drop the weight. You're gonna drop the bench, not the weight, and then do eight, drop the bench again, six, drop the bench again, four to failure, and just one extended set. Again, you gotta be smart here with the weights, so you're probably gonna use like 75, 80 pounds. I feel like a shoulder press, man. Uh. I literally just failed on the fourth rep. On that last set, that was brutal. Wanna put a pencil on there? All right, so the next thing we are doing is a 10 degree decline fly. I didn't really know I had to have my uh, master's in geometry for this workout. So he likes to hit everything from every angle possible. I respect it. So 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, get heavier each set. Chest is done and now we're back where we started with the closed grip bench press for the triceps at this point. It even hurts to go like this, like my chest is fried. So weight is light, 25 pounds. Just gonna focus on the squeeze and the contraction. 12 reps, 10 reps. So a lot of people actually think when you do close grip bench press, you gotta hold it like pretty much with your wrists touching. You don't wanna do that, so it's gonna damage your wrists. Totally fine to go shoulder width, slightly in, but no more than that. Okay, so we just finished triceps, and I'm being completely honest here, this workout has probably murdered me the most out of any workout I've done in a very long time. So now we're moving on to the shoulders, and there's only two things. There's bent over dumbbell lateral raises and the side cable raise. There's no main pressing, because we're pretty much shoulder pressing on that first uh, thing of dumbbell presses, because the angle was so high. So you don't really need to do that much front delt work, because we literally pounded our front delt. So this is pretty much all you need. So these two exercises, and then we're gonna head out and get a post-workout meal. So for the post-workout meal, we are getting some poke. So in the 70s, anything with pineapple was fair game because of the increased interest in Hawaiian culture from the second Hawaiian Renaissance. And now that I think about it, Kofi, no wonder why the sorority parties were 70s themed. Actually, that does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, uh, double pineapple. This thing, is a thing of beauty. I kind of want to poke back, if you know what I'm saying. So this thing is massive. So we got a build your own bowl, because this is one of those times where I actually want to know what's going inside me. We got double pineapple. We got tuna. We got shrimp, tofu. We got ginger on top, first time for everything. Uh, some salad on the side, and then the base is cauliflower rice. And I think cauliflower rice is a lot like hiring an escort to be your girlfriend for an event. It's not the real thing. It will pass, but it will raise some suspicions every now and then, you know what I'm saying? So let's just dive right in. The last time I had this high protein to calorie ratio, I was swimming with the dolphins in mating season. This is amazing. I can confidently say, if I had lived in Hawaii, I'd be, I'd be shredded year round, man. Like this is the type of salad that I am all about. So we're gonna devour this, head back home, and this is not the last time we're having pineapple today. We're having pineapple for dessert, so stay tuned. So I'm about to make a tie-dye shirt because my mom, my sister, and I are about to have a fondue party pretty soon. I want to be 
and I want to dress the part. So I've never done this before and we are going to see how it turns out. So I believe we got to tie a bunch of um, knots around the shirt and then we got to choose our colors and go from there. What? You're going to do one too? Yeah. Okay. You like the tie dye look, don't you? Yeah, I have so many tie-dye things already. Oh, You're sorry. always on the trends. I don't want to use too much blue though. Why? Because there's there's like, I think there's four Avatar sequels coming out and then I know the blue dye, me and Katie can get a lot of mileage out of it. You're supposed to go like this and then if you start like turning it and then it goes into like a wheel. Okay. Right? You've done this, you've done this one or two times. <laughs> I have. I feel like you're more familiar with tying things up than I am. Go pink, purple, and orange. There's only three you choose? It's kind of like a pizza. You only have three toppings max kind of thing. Okay, should I go for it? Wait for me, wait oh, for okay. me. Okay, sorry. You gotta squirt at the same time. You should never say that to your sister ever. You look like you're, you always look like you're putting like sriracha on yours or something like. Ooh. I, I didn't know blue and yellow made green. You didn't know that? No. I know tie dye takes a long time, yeah. usually, but I found a link that says you can microwave it. We're gonna try it. Parents aren't home. I mean. The no one, no one's here to tell us no, you know. So we're gonna try that and see what happens, and we're gonna see who has the better tie dye shirt. Okay, so the tie dye is out of the microwave, and I'm feeling hopeful. It's very hot. It is very hot, so be careful. But Don't thank you. Okay. Ooh, look Let's how see. pro mine is. Oh, that's sick. Yo. Damn, that looks hey. intentional. It was! That's what I told you, I did like the little swirl thing, that's sick. Mine is not gonna look intentional, mine's gonna look- Hey! Yo, I'm actually so proud of myself for that. Good job. Thanks. Mine's gonna look very modern, I guess you could say. Good mine. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. Mine's cool, mine's way oh. nicer. What do you think? What? Yeah, look at the back of that. See, this side, it looks like I got like shot. Yeah, like, I got it like a fight like I was gonna revenant with Leo, I got like a bear fight. Hold yours up. Comment down below, whose t-shirt you like better, 100% mine. No, mine. No, mine. It looks like you missed the memo, mother. I, I didn't know! <laughs> I just came home from lunch. Get a hold of yourself, girl. I know, and you're And like, I would have loved to have dressed up. I was gonna you, say. I know. The hell? I know. You should have went like that, you know? I know. You gotta commit. I don't have any tie-dye. Yeah, I mean, in the 1920s she did it, so. We're back at it again with a 1970s dinner party, a fondue party, huge throughout the 60s and the 70s. And uh, need I say more? I don't want to delay this maceness any longer. I know. So I'm, I'm digging right so in. So we're having cheese fondue today. Cheese there's fondue. there's a variety of things. I've never had cheese fondue before. Have you never? I've no. never either. Oh, yeah. I have. You have? Oh yeah. So who are you giving all this fondue to since you have a fondue pot? Dad and I, I, Dad and I used to have these little fondue parties. Yeah. Do you um, really? Yeah, fondue for two. You know, Shania Twain, you know, party for two. Party for two. That, sounds, that sounds like kind of kinky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Did you ever that? do fondue dinner parties? Well, you don't, well, it's kind of hard to make a whole dinner of it, but certainly lots of snacks and drinks. And yeah, I guess you could. I feel like those would get out of hand. What time yeah. When you run out of those? stuff to dip. That's vegan sausage. Oh, oh, that's so good. Melted cheese just reminds me how much fun it was to be fat. Mm. Don't you think? Wow. It's fun on the Is there camembert in there? Usually it was like Gruyere and Kirschen. I'm getting some Havarti too. This is practically like the, the elegant way of like just putting your head underneath the nacho dispenser, you know? <laughs> I guess so. Is there alcohol in that? Well, that's what I'm saying, isn't mm -hmm. it? I, think, I just think you're an alcoholic. Yeah. They used to call me fondue in high school. Why? Hmm? Why? I was smooth, but then no one wanted to double dip. <laughs> you seem to have a lot of things that they called you in high school. I was a popular kid, Mom. Again, who is they? I was popular. Oh! Wait, so do you know why like fondue became such a big thing? It I don't. seem very I think I would have to say this. I, would think, I think fondue is a fantastic first date thing. I think it's very social. It? And I think that could be why, you know? You're dipping it, and then you're like eating it, and then we're all dipping it. So it's just all of our germs pooling. Yeah, I feel like this is something that would not go over well Well, it's the good thing it's boiling. Yeah. Yeah. We're boiling it for safety. I can't even see anything with these on. Like, oh. Did you ever go to a fondue party? Yeah, yes. You did? Well, I don't, not in the 70s. I was too young. We didn't have fondue. I didn't go to. But we. You're too young. What are you saying? There's not. Like, 
I guess there is alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. but well, it wasn't really something that I hosted. We weren't married even then. Why are you associating getting married with fondue parties? Yeah, that's well, kind of weird. You have to be an adult to go to fondue and parties. And fondue for two? Am well, I like, am I missing something? Yeah. I, said, I don't think that as like a young girl that I would be like hosting fondue parties. Why? Is this Why covered not? for something? Yeah. Thank you for inviting us to your fondue party. Well, You're welcome. Yeah. All right, so for dessert, we are making two different things. The first one we are making is something that was very popular back in the 70s but it's no longer popular anymore. And that is the Watergate salad. The first documented recipe of the Watergate salad is in 1974. And the other dessert we are having is some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So Ben and Jerry's was actually found in 1978. And we all know what it is now. It's probably one of the most popular ice creams in the entire world. So to start with the Watergate salad, we're pretty much mashing up Miracle Whip, marshmallows, pineapple again, shredded coconut, pistachios. There's supposed to be pecans in it, but half the container, pudding mix, pistachio flavored, one cup of some mini marshmallows, eight ounces of the crushed pineapple with the juice. Last but not least, half a cup of some shredded coconut. So the coconut and the pineapple is giving me like a pina colada vibe, so it might not be that bad. There we go, and now we just mix it up and that is it. So we are wrapping up the night with some dessert and watching bowling, because fun fact, bowling was at its peak in the 1970s and they were actually getting paid more than NFL players, which is pretty hard to believe because in this day and age, NFL players are making millions of dollars. So I'm trying to open my Ben & Jerry's here, but let's start off with the Watergate salad because this thing is intriguing me. So this lime green goodness. It's not bad. It's definitely an acquired taste, I would say. Coconut is saving it. What can I say? It tastes like the island. So now, let's get into the Ben & Jerry's chocolate therapy. Usually my chocolate therapy requires a couple shots of tequila and some aloe. I'm expecting some big flavor from this. You're just getting hit by chocolate from all directions and I'm in that vanilla in the middle, kind of offsetting it all. It reminds me of my camera debut. That is delicious, this brownie chunk. Oh, calorie wise, you're looking at 1200. Whenever I eat it out of the pint, guaranteed to eat the whole thing, but like I always say, save a bowl, ride a pint, you know what I mean? So I am gonna wrap up the video here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like. If, what, what decade do you guys wanna see next? Comment it down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.